Our guest today, folks, is Sean Edwards. Sean is the Vice President of Direction in charge of institutional ET. He's an institutional ETF strategist. Want to welcome uh, our man Sean Edwards to TFNN. Sean, how you doing? Good, Tom. How are you? Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being on. It's a great time to be on. We had the Fed minutes come out at yes. 2 o'clock. We yes. have Jackson Hole coming this Friday, right? Yes. You know, we know that there's been, I mean, in the, in the, in the past, you know, six months, eight months, Sean, you know, it seems that most of us thought that the rates would come down earlier than this. Uh, yes. You know, so now we have, when we take a look at Jackson Hole, uh, what are you thinking out there and what are we thinking about rates? Uh, Tom, right. like you, I've, I've been anticipating rates dropping for my own personal reasons as well. But uh, I think we're all in anticipation to see what Fed, uh, what the Fed does, what Jerome Powell and the rest of the economists in Jackson Hole discuss and what the outlook is as far as lowering inflation um, or lowering the interest rates. Uh, we see that, you know, with the recent job data, it looks like inflation may possibly be easing. Um, and then also with the Fed minutes that came out today, we see that there may be, in fact, a rate cut on the horizon. Um, so uh, we may get that result that we want, Tom, pretty shortly. Uh, but I wanted to just spend some time just discussing the impact that, you know, potential rate cut uh, could mean for stocks, bonds and gold and ultimately share uh, some trading opportunities that traders can look at using to uh, take advantage of a potential rate cut. Um, as we know, stocks have been volatile for the most part. Uh, again, as we're, you know, concerned about a potential uh, U.S. recession, then also we saw disappointing earnings from major tech firms like Tesla and Alphabet. So we see that stocks have been volatile as a result, uh, despite that volatility um, in the drop that we saw last month with the S&P. Uh, we know that a low interest uh, rate, low inflation environment is typically generally favorable for stocks and the potential for economic growth um, and rising valuations with the interest rate, um, you know, dropping. Sure. Uh, so some. Uh, mm -hmm, I'm sorry. Well, you know, it's so cool. And, and yeah. folks, this is a different situation. I mean, you, you know, as you're at TFNN, you'll see the direction banners. You can just hit those. You can get right over to the Loved ETFs, okay? And I want to talk with Sean a little bit about the bond market because this is so interesting, Sean. You know, most of the time, us as traders or investors, you know, you're normally in the middle, meaning, and what I would specifically say is, says, okay, it's not so hell-bent of going down on rates or up on rates. And, but in this particular right. case, you know, I would say that, you know, just like we were talking about that, the anticipation of rates going down have been out there for quite some time. Now, when we, look, when we look at your TMF, okay, what's so cool about that, and the TMF, folks, is, okay, is the 20-year Treasury three times bull. And what's so cool is that, you know, we know that the market itself has been pushing, you know, the rates down. But this is really important, folks, because if you either hedging or you think that rates are going down, um, you know, we're at the very beginning of this, which is pretty cool, Sean. Do you know what I'm saying? That no, I, absolutely, Tom. And I, I would say to that point, what we've seen from an inflow standpoint within TMF in particular, yes. as you mentioned, it is a bull 3x ETF on the 20 plus year Treasury bond index. So the assumption there, if you're investing in TMF, is that you believe that rates are going to decline because of that inverse relationship between bond prices and yields. Uh, we see that the contrarian trade has been to, you know, uh, invest in TMF. Um, and so it's been one of our funds that we've seen uh, a good bit of inflows in. And to your point, it's a trading tool. Yes. Uh, if you are looking to invest in any of our leveraged or inverse ETFs, uh, they are designed to be tactical short term trading tools. So in a week that we have upcoming, uh, you know, with the Jackson Hole meeting with the Fed yeah. meeting today, uh, this is a tool that you can look at utilizing to take advantage of, you know, the, you know, interest rate movements uh, sure. in the short term. Right. And, you know, when we start talking interest rates, folks, we got to start talking small caps because the small caps themselves hadn't been moving until about, you know, three or four months ago. And then you talk about moving. And I remember specifically, Sean, you know, at the beginning of all these uh, leveraged e products, you know, from direction, uh, 
the TZA and the TNA, they will like everyone traded them. And what I'm watching is that the amount of calls that are coming in again. Now, now picture what I just said there, I'm talking, I'm going back like 10 years. And then, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and then what ended up happening literally about, you know, about two and a half months ago, people have a real interest in it again. And, as, and what that has to do with folks, it has to do with the aspect of the rate cuts again, you know, so there's absolutely. A, yeah, it, absolutely. Tom, and I, 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 w I would second that. I will also say you saw a rotation into small caps again when you're thinking about the the run up in the stock market as a result of, you know, the over concentration in those uh, tech mega cap names. So yes. you also saw rate cut conversation. You saw the disappointing earnings within those mega cap names. And again, within, you know, the small cap index, um, TNA and TZA attracts the Russell 2000. So, again, if, in fact, we do have lower interest rate environment and you are looking to trade that low interest rate environment, small caps can stand to benefit. Yes. So uh, some trading opportunities there uh, for sure on the horizon. And again, uh, we provide tools that, you know, are bullish or bearish. So if you don't think that, you know, rate cuts are imminent, you can look at TZA and that's the bear uh, version of that pair. Again, give you an exposure to small caps, effectively uh, the Russell 2000. Exactly. Now we got to talk gold because what has happened in the gold <laughs> market, folks, for some reason, you know, gold yes. has been on the move. But what has happened in the ETF structures is that there hasn't been as much buy-in in the ETF structure as there has been in the past. Now, we'll see whether that changes, Sean, because it's so intriguing that we have the, the contract itself hitting all-time highs. And, of course, you get some amazing products there. We're talking about the nugget, nugget the dust, you know, the J-Nug yes. and, and the, the J-STD. Uh, um, yes. And if we could talk about that a little, that would be awesome. Sure. And to your point, within the market, we've definitely seen gold uh, approach all time highs. And it looks like it may even from an analyst standpoint, rise above its current all time high and hit 3000 within the next six to 12 months. Yes. And as you mentioned, we do offer traders the opportunity to invest in gold, but it's gold miners. So right. it's not actually the commodity, but gold mining companies. So the ETFs here gives you exposure to an index that's related to gold mining related equity companies. So again, if you are looking to trade uh, gold miners, um, you can look at using Nugget, NUGT, which is the 2x uh, bull ETF or dust, which is the 2X bear ETF. Absolutely amazing. What an education, Sean. Thank you so much. Look forward to having you again. No problem, Tom. Thanks Take a care. lot. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. Stay right there, yeah. folks. Come right back.